my God, for the rest of my life, not just for the rest of this day, but for the rest of my life, day after day, night after night, I will worship him. I will praise him. Yes, I will serve him. Indeed, I am so grateful to have this opportunity to stand behind this sacred and new desk that we've set up in the year of 2020. We've got new things still going on. So even our preaching positions are new on this day. I'm grateful to um, God for giving me this chance to, to be in his presence, to call on his name. I'm always grateful to my senior pastor, the Reverend Dr. Dolphus C. Lacey. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me this opportunity to exercise my gift one more time in this holy house of prayer to Reverend James Perry. Thank you for setting the tone last week. And just so you'll know, I will not. The shoes are staying on, on today. I don't have on loafers. I have on lace-ups. So y'all got to work with a brother. Amen. But thank you so much for your heart and your spirit to minister dear love Harriet to the worship and praise team to all of my brothers in the house and in your house. Indeed, we are grateful for just this day that God has given us. I promise not to be before you long. I will be able to hear your amens right where you are. If I don't hear them where I am, that means I will have to go a little deeper. So make sure you're saying amen on today. I promise that I will not be before you long. I know we have some leftovers to get back to. That's right, I gotta, I gotta that's right. So let me hurry up on today. Today we turn our attention to the seventh chapter of Joshua, verses one through eight. But the Israelites were unfaithful in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of them, so the Lord's anger burned against Israel. Now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is near Beth Avon to the east of Bethel and told them go up and spy out the region. So the men went up and spied out I. When they returned to Joshua, they said not all the army will have to go up against I. Send two or 3,000 men to take it and do not weary the whole army for only a few people live there. So about 3,000 went up, but they were routed by the men of I who killed about 36 of them. They chased the Israelites from the city gate as far as the stone quarries and struck them down on the slopes. At this, the hearts of the people melted in fear and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord, remaining there till evening. The elders of Israel did the same and sprinkled dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, sovereign Lord, why did you ever bring this people across the Jordan to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side of Jordan. Pardon your servant, Lord. What can I say now that Israel has been routed by its enemies? The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. And indeed, before I offer this prayer, I must give a shout out to the co-CEOs of my public relations firm, Mildred Pittman and Jennifer Pittman. Thank you so much <laughs> for your prayers. That's right, I have to take care of mama and I have to take care of my sister because we have a sleepover. Amen, amen, and amen. Dear God, it's once more and again that we bow in your presence, dedicating ourselves again today to serve you for the rest of our lives. Whatever our days may bring, even in this challenging year, we're still committing ourselves to serve you for the rest of our lives. Dear God, you have done so much. You have been so good just this morning long. We say that we are grateful, and we want to let you know how much we love you, how much we adore you, how much we want to worship you, how grateful we are for your manifold blessing. Have your way, O oh God, even now in this moment. Let your sons and your daughters hear less of me and more of thee. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we say together amen and amen. A little over two weeks ago, God gave Pastor Lacey release and our course for the next five weeks was set. Overcomer, a sermon series on Joshua. 
And so we began with our senior pastor preaching, Overcome Natural Obstacles. From Joshua 3, verses 1 through 8, we learned how to overcome by watching God, how to overcome by following God, and how to overcome by obeying God. Last Sunday, we walked it out, literally, as Pastor Perry preached, overcome mortal obstacles, step by step, also forever known as these pews were made for walking. Amen? Amen. Based on Joshua 6, verses 1 through 8, we discovered God recommends that we have the faith to see. God requires that we have the faith to walk out his solution, and God releases us to have the faith to shout. Today, we remain in the book of Joshua, the seventh chapter, verses one through nine, as we seek to overcome internal obstacles. Cue opening music. Cue announcer commentator Jim McKay, spanning the globe to bring you the constant variety of sport, the thrill of victory, and the agony of defeat. The human drama of athletic competition. This is ABC's Wide World of Sports. This announcement reminds us of, in retrospect, a simpler, less complicated time in our lives. Whatever we were doing, riding our bikes or skateboards, roller skating, playing skelly in the street, or a handball in the park, even we were just sitting on the stoop watching the cars go by or watching girls like Karima jump double dutch, and she's still jumping double dutch. It all stopped on Saturday at 3.30 as we found our way to the television. Indeed, yes, it was a simpler, less complicated time, but don't judge us. We had Soul Train with Don Cornelius. We had Schoolhouse Rock. And we had the wide world of sports with Jim McKay. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat. After such a tremendous victory at Jericho, the seventh chapter of Joshua comes as a complete surprise to us. In striking contrast to the victories read about in the first six chapters, it is here that a series of failures are presented. The thrill of victory was quickly replaced by the agony of defeat. My brothers and my sisters, I must let you know that there is only one step between victory and defeat. And that one step can be very short. I was the next step on the Israelites' journey to conquest because of its strategic Location. You Bible scholars will remember that conquering I was key to the conquest of the entire land. While smaller than Jericho, its conquest was of great importance because it would give Israel control of the main route that ran from the North Ridge to the South Ridge along the land's highlands of the central portion. I'm sure you will also remember that Jericho had been placed on a ban. Harem, a Hebrew word which means a devoted thing or a ban, refers to the exclusion of an object from use or abuse by man along with its irreversible surrender to God. Surrendering something to God meant and still means devoting it to the service of God, even if that it is us. For those of you taking notes, I'll say that again. Surrendering something to God meant and still means devoting it to the service of God, even if that it is you and me. Just a few observations from this insightful text concerning how we can overcome internal obstacles, and we will continue in this thanks and giving holy day. Can I get a witness? Amen. Internal conflicts, or for our purposes, obstacles, have been defined as one source, as barriers that present us from accomplishing our personal 
or in this case, spiritual goals. Coming from within, they stem from our habits, beliefs, and from psychological issues. How many people got issues on today? I've got issues even as they flow from my heart. Issues like anxiety, depression, ego, low self-esteem, lack of self-confidence, and or fear. First, internal obstacles define disobedience. Internal obstacles define disobedience. The seventh chapter of Joshua begins with that good gospel, strong spiritual word, but. Y'all heard me, but. But, but contrast the seventh chapter with the end of chapter 6, the 27th verse specifically, which records, so the Lord was with Joshua and his fame spread throughout the land. First, there was the thrill of victory. Now, there is the agony of defeat. We as believers are never in greater danger of a fall than after a victory. We as believers are never in greater danger of a fall than after victory. When we are in this place, and I remember times of high worship and high praise when we would just go in, I would leave this place not only drunk in the spirit, not only needing that good Sunday afternoon nap, but knowing that it was on the way. I knew that the enemy was going to try his level best to get me at me. So as I left this place of worship, as I left this place of praise, I would say, if you're coming for me, you better take me out. Because if I get back up, I'm still going to worship you. I'm still going to praise you. I'm still going to serve you. But we as believers are never in greater danger of a fall than after a victory. We are prone to drop our guard and begin to trust in ourselves or in our past victories rather than the Lord. It's just something we love about nostalgia. We just love looking back over our shoulder. I'm talking about you. Yeah, we love looking back about what used to be and, and how we used to do things and remember when the church and remember when the building and remember when the choir used to. We are prone to drop our guard and begin to trust in ourselves or in our past victories rather than the Lord. But I've stopped by for just a little while today to remind you that one victory never ensures the next. One victory never ensures the next. Well, why would I say something like that? I'm glad you asked. In 2008, we elected Barack Hussein Obama as the 44th and the first president of the United States of America. In 2012, some of us re-elected Barack Hussein Obama to the office of the president of the United States of America. Okay, we got it now. We can relax. We can chill. We've, we've had our, our moment. We've had a black man in the White House. I don't, I don't really have to vote. We, we got it. If I vote, I vote. If I don't vote, I don't vote. In 2016, Hillary Clinton was not elected as the first woman president of the United States of America. I can hear the Apostle Paul saying in 1 Corinthians 10 12, so if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. <laughs> so to the disciples of Bethany Nation living and voting in Atlanta, no pressure. No pressure from us. We, we, we're your disciples. We're your church family. We love you. Just remember the names, Raphael Warnock, and John Ossoff, no, no pressure. We're do, dealing with turkeys, no chickens, so forget Purdue. And as much as you love the WNBA, don't think about nothing concerning the WNBA. Two names, Warnock and Ossoff, but no pressure. God clearly held Israel's whole camp accountable for the action of one man, Achan. 
His name in the Hebrew is closely associated with the word akor, which means trouble. Bethany Nation, never trust a man whose name means trouble. Never trust a man whose name rhymes with chump <laughs> or rump. <laughs> God viewed na the nation as a unit, a collective, if you will. Our believers' sin impacted everyone. The Apostle Paul asked rhetorically in 1 Corinthians 5, verse 6, Don't you know that a little yeast leavens the whole batch of dough? <laughs> Internal obstacles define disobedience. And remember that a little disobedience is still disobedience. Internal obstacles define disobedience. Secondly, secondly, I got y'all note takers, I got you. Secondly, internal obstacles depict defeat. Internal obstacles depict defeat. The defeat of Israel's army at the smaller eye is the only one recorded in the book of Joshua. One can only ask, how did it happen so quickly? Primarily, it was the result of Achan's sin. However, there were some other issues going on as well, at least four deadly errors that Joshua and Israel made. First, they remained ignorant of Achan's sin. They underestimated their enemy's strength. They overestimated their own army's strength. And then they took the Lord for granted. They remained ignorant of Achan's sin. They underestimated their enemy's strength. They overestimated their own army's strength, and they took the Lord for granted. There's a little Joshua in all of us. And for some of you, there's a lot of Joshua in y'all. <laughs> There's a lot of Joshua in a few of us. Our workaholic mentalities, activity-oriented bents, and our desire to get it done manifests in our tendency to rush ahead of God. Pastor Lacey continues to tell us time and time again, to teach us time and time again, that often we are out of position for one of two reasons. Either we are lagging behind God or we are racing ahead of God. Where, where are you? Are you lagging behind God or are you racing ahead of him? Just a question, just a question. The last part of verse 5 reads, so the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Demoralized by the defeat at I, misgivings and lack of confidence and hope in God was created within and among the people. That sounds just like us because typically we act the same way. We are quick to become depressed, discouraged, disoriented, looking in every direction for a reason for our defeat except within. We look in every direction for a reason for our defeat, except within ourselves. So we tweak instead of lead. So we fire our staff instead of lead. So we hold super spreader events instead of lead. So we Hey, golf instead of lead. That was my only action moment for the sermon, y'all. I'm not doing the pews. <laughs> we do everything except look within ourselves for the reasons that we have been defeated. Internal obstacles depict defeat. And thirdly and finally, and I'm almost done, internal obstacles deconstruct dismay. Internal obstacles deconstruct dismay. The sixth verse states, 
Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord remaining there till evening. God's people, including the great heroes and sheroes, those unnamed women in our, our Bible, leaders of the faith are portraits with flaws, blemishes, warts, and all. I must let you in on a secret, and I ask that you tell no one that unlike photographer James Perry, God does not touch up our photos. He doesn't touch up our pictures like Reverend Perry does. What you see is what you get. <laughs> In the defeat at I, Joshua's leadership is tested. I tell you, Bethany Nation, that failure is nothing more than a test. It's common to all men and women, unique to no one. The successful leader is the man and the woman because women are leaders. Sisters, can I get a witness? <laughs> the successful leader is the man and the woman who has learned that failure is not final. You see, failure is not the end, whether it is his, his or her own failure or someone else's. In fact, failure can be the back door to success. It has been said that a setback is nothing more than a setup for a, oh, y'all got to participate too. <laughs> a setback is nothing more than a setup for a comeback. Following a full day on his face before the Lord, Joshua communicates his confusion in three questions and two statements. Joshua deconstructs his dismay. He didn't take it out on anyone else. He didn't escape it with some substitute. I don't know what that means. <laughs> he did what we all should do. He took his grievances to the source. And I maintain that sometimes we just talk to the wrong people. We talk too much <laughs> first. <laughs> and then we talk to the wrong people. Do you ever realize that a lot of people you talk to have no power? They have no power and they have no plan. That's why they're available to talk to you. I guess. Then you also talk to people with no authority and no answers. They don't have a clue. We talk to the wrong people, but I've found if I have a little talk with Jesus, I've discovered that if I take my burdens to the Lord and leave them there, my dismay over the obstacles in my life are deconstructed. Internal obstacles define disobedience. Internal obstacles depict defeat. And internal obstacles deconstruct dismay. So, then how do we overcome internal obstacles? Embrace failure. Yeah. Embrace failure. Handle it, learn from it, then get over it. Handle it, learn from it, and then get over it. Accept and acknowledge that in most cases, the thrill of victory is followed by the agony of defeat. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. Even if we find ourselves defeated, we can still experience victory. It is our defeats, it is our obstacles in life that help us build strength, helps us be resilient, and it helps us overcome internal obstacles. It's rare that people have a smooth run to success. Let me introduce you to a couple of people that are successful that used to be failures. First, there is Walt Disney. Yes, him. Walt Disney was a failure. He was fired from 
the Kansas City Star? <laughs> because he lacked imagination and he had no good ideas. Your Walt Disney was a failure. <laughs> and mine too. Oprah Winfrey was a failure. Yes, own network, yes. Oprah, the book club, Oprah, yes. The giveaways, you get a car, you get a car. Oprah Winfrey was a failure. For you see, her first job in television ended abruptly because she was deemed unfit for television. I guess if you're unfit for television, you do what she did, buy a network. <laughs> Colonel Sanders, among hundreds of others, were failures. His, his recipe, that Kentucky Fried Chicken, down the block from Popeye's, that recipe was rejected by over 1,000 people before finding success with a restaurant in Utah. Yeah, failures <laughs> who are success. Well, there's, there's one more I want to tell you about. I, I find myself to be in good company then, too, because I was a failure. Yes, I was a failure. Don't tell nobody. I failed the New York State Regents for Spanish in my junior year of high school. But knowing where I live, I passed it the second time. <laughs> I failed accounting one in my freshman year at Temple in Philly. Well, I, and I registered for accounting two, but that didn't make sense. So I passed accounting one the second time I took it. Don't worry, y'all. Like I said, I'm, I, my name is also Usher. This is my confessions to y'all. God and Mao already knew. <laughs> I was also laid off from Verizon seven years ago after 22 years of service. That wasn't failure. That was just people hating on successful black management. Nevertheless, I've discovered that my failures were not final. Neither were they fatal. You see, these failures fueled my success. These defeats determined my victories. I affirm myself when I say that I am a success. I affirm myself. I pat my own self on the back when I say that I am a success. In fact, I am not just a success. I am victorious. I am victorious. And here's a few reasons why. Victory. I have victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he brought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I, I told Satan, Get thee behind me. Victory today is mine. The thrill of victory, the agony of defeat, overcome internal obstacles, embrace failure, handle it, learn from it, and then get over it. And you too will be more than a success. In fact, you will be victorious. Today, victory is yours. And this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.